Do you think that they that they were DMing on Tinder, right? He had a picture with a pogo stick, right? You think All that pictures. they were only talking about his pogo stick? And she was like, oh my God, like the thing that sets you apart from the other guys on this app is your pogo stick. Yeah, everyone has an in or something, right, that they bring to the world. So, <laughs> so I imagine he was like, this person. Oh, I have to bring this to this bar, this trendy Williamsburg bar we're meeting in. Clearly, she just wants to see this pogo stick that I have. Well, imagine this conversation, okay? The guy writes, Hey, which one are you? You have so many friends. <laughs> the woman Don't writes. Don't ever do that. <laughs> which one are you? The woman writes back. I'll let you find out if you bring your, po- your pogo stick to our first date. Wink. Then the guy's like, sounds great. Let's do it. So it's three, com- three texts and they're already dating based on that conversation. It's, an, it's wow. also because yeah. I okay. can imagine it being like how eight year olds date in kindergarten or something like that. It's like, check out my pogo Were stick. Were you eight it. years old? Were you eight years old in kindergarten? Did, did your mom <laughs> tell you that everybody in kindergarten was eight years old? I was thinking about what my favorite commercial is, and I don't know when I'm going to ever have an excuse to talk about this commercial on this podcast. So here we go. The best commercial ever. You've probably seen it. It's a New York City local commercial, and it is a delight. Okay? Here's the commercial. I'm going to tell you what it is at the end. Aliens. They come to Earth. Okay? Oh, oh my God. I know exactly. I know exactly. <laughs> I saw this is an this is like years ago this commercial right when it when we were like kids like every yes once yes in a while, yes but when we were like eight right or like yes ten. yes aliens come to Earth right <laughs> naturally the aliens are coming to Earth and they're getting a message from their like leader alien to be like where are you guys come back to like the home planet and they ignore the message and do you know why the aliens are ignoring this message where do yes, you think they went. Yes, I know. They exactly went to they went. Gallagher's Strip Club in Gallagher's New York 2000 City. is the name <laughs> of the strip club. And I rem- I know, I kn- fucking, oh my God, I can see it. If I close my eyes, I see that commercial because that came on all, all the time. I, when we were kids, that would come on like regular TV. It would be like CBS News at 6 and it would be like Gallagher's 2000. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so basically the end of the commercial is a bunch of aliens getting lap dances, ignoring their like commander to go back to their planet. Now, and here's the thing that I never thought of when I was a kid watching that. Why would aliens be sexually attracted to humans? Like, would you be sexually attracted to some kind of glip glorp alien figure? I wouldn't be. And if you are, you're fucked up. You don't know that. You don't know what aliens look like. Um, I'm not attracted to the aliens in that commercial, I gotta say. If it was reversed, I'd be like, oh my god, I'm getting out of here. Um, anyway, I, I do think perhaps there is something to the root of the thesis of the song that advertising causes therapy. Because <laughs> yes. that commercial has stayed with me my whole life, and is that a good thing? Do you think that... <laughs> Probably was, not. All right. There's... 8.5 million people in New York City and like yeah. 20 million in like greater New York. Do you think that somebody, somebody in those 20 fucking million people watching that commercial, some man was sees that commercial and is like, honey, uh, I gotta go. I, uh, I said I was going, uh, bowling with the guys. I'm going bowling. I'm gonna go, don't go to the bowling alley. I'm gonna go. And he runs to Gallagher's 2000 and he's just like, oh my God, the whole way there, he's like, Gallagher's 2000, Gallagher's 2000. Is he going there because he wants to see aliens and we've made content contact? Yes. Or he just is like so... <laughs> He's like, it- the aliens are at Gallagher's 2000. <laughs> <laughs> they've landed on Earth and they've come to this strip club in Long Island City, Queens. <laughs> it's like the end of... I know where it is, too. That's the sad <laughs> part. It's in Long Island City, Queens because they would say that in the commercial. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's like a Shutter Island type thing, right? Mm-hmm. Where Danny and Lisa... Oh, are the like the white guys in the white coats and the band is like the inmates at Shutter Island. And so Danny and Lisa always have to like play into their imagination that they're in this big rock and roll show. And really they're like in straight jackets in an insane asylum. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. It. I think we broke down that lyric. Good. Great. We See, we told down. you we would learn something here, folks. This is what you learn. <laughs> But like, I guess the question I have is who would, if you are a cop, 
Who do you want on your beat? Lois Lane or Jimmy Carter? Who do you want as your partner? Well, I don't think any, I don't think Lois Lane nor Jimmy Carter were known for their physical prowess. So I picked Jimmy Carter simply because there's two things that I think are important. One is the novelty of former president Jimmy Carter being a random cop is kind of funny. If you like show up for like, (laughs) you're getting pulled over for like a traffic (laughs) violation and you're, and you're just like, Oh, sorry. Maybe this is saying too much. I am clearly very hammered driving because you are look like Jimmy Carter, former president. (laughs) That makes no sense that Jimmy Carter, former president would be a cop, but clearly before me, is the man from from Georgia himself, the peanut farmer, the president, yeah, ran Jimmy Carter. Yeah, crisis person. The man who wanted the country to go to the metric system, Jimmy Carter. Oh, we stand the metric system. On we stand the podcast, metric system. Um, <laughs> the second thing is former presidents have Secret Service protection. So I feel like if you're a cop mm. and Jimmy Carter is your partner, you're just like, you get more you get more friends to hang out with you know and you know secret service guys they're probably a fun bunch think of the banter oh this is the third (laughs) podcast where i'm gonna bring up the idea of the guy in the like long island guy in the bar being like hey am i causing a problem (laughs) is am i cause can't you see that we love my cock my cock is out right now in the bar okay everybody loves it babe babe am i causing a problem i have to call security and he's his pants are down. He's blackout drunk. <laughs> he's like what Gallagher's two thousand. It's at Gallagher's. T- <laughs> yes, he's at the strip club, <laughs> and the stripper is like, "You need to put that away. I'm calling security right now." And, she, and he's like, "Am I causing a problem? Can't you see that we love my cock?" <laughs> I do love the idea that someone's like oh, had a tough day at the office. Like <laughs> Carol's giving me shit about the tax returns being missing and I accidentally Gerald deleted. Gerald is the worst at the <laughs> office. Yeah, just every I just nothing's going good and then your like partner's like <laughs> rough day at the office. Listen, honey. I play Russian roulette every day with the bullet called life. Here's my version for a more positive outlook on life, okay. which would be I play Russian roulette every day with a bullet that called life that is actually one of those bullets that clowns have in their gun when they pull the trigger flowers come out in a kind of a cute way or it says bang on a flag flowers okay not bang on a flag flowers did you not hear me i i heard you i fucking heard you (laughs) okay so we got everybody fucks everybody sucks everybody cries everybody dies so to me this reminded me of everybody poops (laughs) because it's just like one of those songs that you're like listen world it's okay to fuck suck cry and die and it's okay to poop so i would like to see a version of the song where it just only everybody poops i can imagine a really confident and also insecure person listening to this podcast i'm sorry listening to (laughs) wow listening to this song for example just like i'm imagining some like Let's just say stereotypical high school quarterback from a movie in the 80s where he picked on everyone, right? So that character, someone's like, you should listen to System of a Down. And then he listens to the song and hears everybody sucks and he pauses the music and he's like, hey, I don't <laughs> fucking suck. I'm the king. And that's it. That's that's yeah. the image. He just can't deal with the song where everybody sucks right he has no other definition for sucks besides like an insult of you suck 